I graduated, um, well, I grew up in Oklahoma City, oh. actually. Um, I grew up in, um, like, way long time ago, and uh, went to U.S. Grand High School in South Oklahoma City, and then went to University of Oklahoma and got a journalism degree in professional writing. Hey. Historically, I've been in marketing and, and uh, communications for most of my career for actually mostly large companies. Um, I had a consulting business and then decided that I was going to run for office. And so I ran for office in House District 78 and was in uh, the legislature as of 2016 is when I was elected. So I went into the legislature for my first session in 2017. So I'm on my second term, third legislative session. I happen to be just casual friends with the founding CEO, Susan McElmont. And um, I've always been very um, interested in uh, non-traditional thinking and creative solutions and you know really kind of changing the status quo it's really something that i um it's just kind of part of my dna and so we just got to be friends and we have very similar backgrounds and so she was telling me about creative oklahoma and what its mission is and what its objective is and some of the things that they've done historically and i was just fascinated and then when she decided that she needed to retire, then she reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Creative Oklahoma, when you initially think of Creative Oklahoma and you hear the term, you think, oh, it's the arts, but it's not. I mean, um, culture is part of it, but it's really creative thinking and innovative solutions. And that can manifest itself in education, it can manifest itself in business, and it can also manifest itself in culture. And culture can mean a variety of things. The one thing we do not want to do is overlap what other people are already doing. We already have the Oklahoma Arts Council. We have all of these wonderful arts organizations. Our goal is not to duplicate effort, but rather to look for opportunities in a creative space that gives rise to the creative solutions and thinking part. One of the things we do is we have an entrepreneur um, mentoring program that we just launched. We are a sister program to MIT's Venture Mentoring Service. And so there's a very specific um, structure and protocol around that mentoring process. And it involves bringing entrepreneurs that have already been vetted through a pretty good process. And we connect them with um, senior level business executives who have been successful as entrepreneurs themselves. And so what we're trying to do is fill a void in terms of entrepreneur support where we can build innovation and create support around that network of creative thinkers. And that's what really entrepreneurs are. They're creative thinkers. Um, so that's one program. Second program that we're looking at is we, uh, of the last couple of years, we had a program called Creative Communities. And it really has to do with innovation and um, creative placemaking in rural communities so that we can um, help our rural communities um, grow and be successful, but not um, change the authenticity of what that city is all about. So that's another thing. We also recognize and pull together uh, our creative um, stars. So if you are an innovator, like for example, if you are a, um, a surgeon, a plastic surgeon, who has innovated um, skin grafting technology that is completely um, you know, blow mind blowing, um, and you've changed the industry as a result, then we will recognize you as a creativity ambassador because you're innovating and you're using creative thinking to solve 
you know, serious problems. So that's kind of another example of a program. Creative thinking is, a, is really a matter of um, making sure that you're looking outside the box. You know, that you're not, you don't have an attitude of, well, we've always done it this way. And that's the way I've always thought. And so my legislative process in terms of how I apply that is to ask a lot of questions. And don't necessarily just accept the fact that this is how they say the solution needs to be approached. Uh, my job is to ask questions. My job is to say, well, what about this? And what about that? And so I um, use that method of thinking and conversation to bring about discussion that perhaps may not have occurred in a traditional way. So that's how I use, you know, that creative process to identify solutions for policy from a policy perspective. For creative types, you have to have an environment, right? You, in, in Oklahoma City, I grew up here. This is not the city I grew up in. When I grew up in Oklahoma City, I said, after I graduated high school, went to college, I said, I'm never coming back here. And I meant it. And I moved to Tulsa and I never came back, never considered coming back. But this is not the same city. I am blown away by the desire of this city to invest itself, by the enthusiasm of the residents around this city and what they've been able to create. I'm continually blown away by so many microcosms of awesomeness. You've got music, you've got um, culinary talent that is mind-blowing. You've got all of these entrepreneurs springing up. You've got all of this creative space coming together. You have this vibrancy that it's difficult to put your finger on, but you feel it when you're out in the community and you're talking to people. And it's really a very exciting place to be right now. It really is, and I thought I would never, ever say that. I think that people still look at it as, one, a government center, which it is, and, and it's pretty significant, so that's going to be a little bit overpowering. Um, and oftentimes you don't see the creative part of Oklahoma City manifested in state government. So that, I think, is a, is a bit of a challenge from a reputation perspective. So I think that um, the other thing is that we've got a significant um, history as, um, as Western. You know, and so you've still got that kind of Western cowboy feel to it. And I think that those kinds of things, because they've been so long in the making, are long lasting and people will immediately think of that. But I think that's really on the cusp of changing significantly because of all this other um, activity that's happening around all of these creative and innovative um, opportunities for for business, for um, play, for gastronomy, for entertainment. I mean, it's really bursting. Here's, I think, an important point that we've got to remember. And, and this is really where I think Creative Oklahoma has um, an opportunity to contribute uh, in a significant way. And that is we've got to start thinking about creative industries in a much broader, more robust way. You know, creative industries can be entrepreneurs and creative thinkers, but you've also got to look at other kinds of industries as creative industries, like gastronomy. That includes all of your restaurants, all your chefs. Those are creatives, and those are really critical in creating that kind of awesome environment that other kinds of creatives want to live in. You've also got other kinds of creatives like architects. Architects are significant creatives. And so we at Creative Oklahoma want to redefine what we believe are creative industries. And what we wanna do is be a support system 
in a, um, a, a multiplier and a really economic development arm for the creative industries as a whole. Now, no one's really doing that. You think of economic development, you think of traditional economic development. But what we really want to do is focus on supporting the fashion industry, um, the gastronomy industry, the architects, the designers, all of those other industries that are really creative, that make up that community that's so important in giving us that three-dimensional creative class feel as a world-class city.